Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. As you may well know, I recently acquired the box of gaming goodness that is Dungeon Quest. I've already done a couple of playthroughs of it on the channel, as well as a full unboxing and contents listing. Shortly after that, I acquired the expansion Heroes for Dungeon Quest, which has a whole bunch of new heroes that you can incorporate into the game. And in my unboxing video for that expansion, I did say that this is my favourite of the two Dungeon Quest expansions. The second expansion is Catacombs, which introduces a new way to explore the dungeon. I said at the time, it's just as well that that was my least favourite of the two expansions because it's incredibly difficult to find and incredibly expensive. But not long after that, I was contacted by one of my subscribers, Antek Marunovic, and I do apologise if I am mispronouncing your name. He very kindly offered to donate his copy of Dungeon Quest Catacombs to the channel so that I could show it to you all, which was just an incredible gesture and once again, I have a video on my channel which only exists because I have the best subscribers in the world. I genuinely don't know what I've done to deserve such an awesome following, but I really do appreciate it when people reach out to me and make these incredibly generous offers. So please all share your thanks to Antec in the comments below for making this possible. And what is this? This is going to be an unboxing, basically. I'm just going to run through the components. I'm going to talk about what this expansion adds to the overall experience. Before I go any further, I should point out that Antec didn't have the box for this expansion. And I suspect that the reason the box isn't present is part of the reason why this expansion is a little bit harder to find, because this is an expansion which is very similar to the Talisman Adventures expansion from the second edition of Talisman. It's just cards and tokens, and all of those cards and tokens are pretty much designed to be incorporated into decks and token pools from the base game. It is one of those expansions that gets completely integrated into your core box experience, and really there's no need to keep the box. I should imagine a lot of people got rid of those boxes, and I think if you're looking at Dungeon Quest secondhand on eBay, places like that, it is worth looking very carefully at the pictures in the listings because there's probably a chance that in some cases people are selling copies of Dungeon Quest which actually have the Catacombs expansion integrated into them and they may not even know it. Unfortunately, of course, if you are looking for a complete boxed example, you really are going to have to pay a premium for that cardboard. But anyway, what do you actually get in the box? This is an expansion that introduces a few new things. First of all, it introduces the concept of magical amulets, and I will talk about those a little bit more in a moment. The second thing it does is it gives you more of stuff you already have. It gives you more traps, it gives you more room cards, it gives you more search cards. However, a lot of those new cards are designed to segue into a new concept that this expansion provides, which is the catacombs, a maze that is beneath the dungeon. So a lot of those cards say things like, oh, you found a ladder down into the catacombs or something like that. And then the final part of the expansion are the various cards and tiles that you need to actually explore those catacombs. There is, of course, a rules sheet, and enclosed with that is a reference sheet. You really need that reference sheet, much like the pull-out reference sheet from the base game. If you don't have that reference sheet, you are going to have a very hard time using this expansion unless you can find those rules online somewhere. Let's start by looking at one of the most amusing new additions to the game, and that is the Magical Amulets. There are 11 amulet cards, and you can get these by searching uh, or by exploring crypts. There's a few other ways. And the fun thing about the amulets is you don't know what they are going to do. If you decide to take an amulet and wear it, the player to your right will draw one of these amulet cards. They will read what the amulet does and they will keep it secret from you until such time as something happens that will cause that amulet to trigger. When the amulet triggers, they reveal what amulet you are wearing and then you suffer the consequences. Sometimes the amulets are very good, Sometimes they are ridiculously bad. I'm not going to show them all to you because I think it's fun to find out for yourself as you are playing, but there is at least one amulet in this deck 
that will instantly teleport you into the dragon's lair, wake the dragon up and have him eat you. Which means you find the magical amulet, you get all excited, you decide to keep it, the player to your right reads the amulet card, knows that you are going to die instantly at the beginning of your next turn, they keep that secret from you, they sit on that knowledge for a whole round, and then as soon as it goes back to your turn, they get to reveal that card and say, oh by the way, you're dead now. It's really mean, and it's really dungeon quest. The next thing you get are eight new treasure tokens for placing in the dragon's hoard, and four of these are just chaff really, they are low value coins, but there are four items that have special rules. The first is a treasure chest, which has no value to begin with, but if you get out of the dungeon with it, you can choose to open it. There's a chance it will explode, but if it doesn't, you may get a huge amount of additional money. Then there is the sun and the moon items. They are worth a fair bit of money individually, but if you can get the pair, they are worth significantly more. Finally, there is a magic book. The magic book has no value at all, but while you are in the dragon's chamber, you can use the book and you roll on a chart and different things will happen as you activate spells from the book. You may instantly wake up the dragon and die, you may get all of your health back, or you may get teleported straight out of the dungeon. Next up, we have our new cards, which are simply shuffled into your existing decks from the core game. You get two new traps, which are the fancy new spear traps. You get two new crypt cards, both of which grant you one of the new magical amulets. You get 12 new room cards, and the rules do say that if you are going to incorporate these 12 new room cards, there are certain cards you should remove from the base game in order to keep the distribution a little bit fair. But where's the fun in that? Just sling them all in. Anyway, these cards do different things. There's a couple that grant you amulets. There's uh, our good old spear trap. And then there is the Passage Down, which is a way of actually getting into the catacombs. And there are new enemies like vampires and the Snotlings. The Snotlings are a horrible new enemy that will basically keep respawning until you kill them. You get these wonderfully illustrated new tokens to actually indicate their presence. There are 12 of these tokens in total. You get one with a value of 10, two with a value of five, two with a value of three, two with a value of two, and five with a value of one. And when you encounter the Snotlings, you roll a d10 and a d6, you add the numbers together, and that is how many Snotlings attack you, so you make up that value using a distribution of tokens that fits. And then you roll a d10 to see how many you kill. If you don't kill them all in one go, they will damage you, and then you roll a d6, and that many more Snotlings pile in. You then roll your d10 again, and if you don't kill them all, you take damage, and then you roll a d6, and more Snotlings pile in and this can keep on going until you are whittled down to zero health. It is frightfully bothersome, but look how awesome they look in the artwork. As you saw, some of the room cards have a passageway leading down into the catacombs. When you find one of those cards, you have to use one of these new Diddy tiles. There are five of these in the expansion. You place that tile on the room you are in, and then that represents a way that anybody can access the catacombs below. The fun thing about these little entry tiles is they are designed to fit exactly inside all of the wall art on the room tiles. Isn't that cute? But room cards are far from the only way to enter the catacombs. The expansion also includes 12 new search cards. One of them is a passage down. There are more amulets in there. We have some surprises, these are ghouls that will grab onto you and you have to wrestle with them to get free. And then there is this fancy wizard's amulet. Um, it comes in two parts, you have to get both parts. If you get both parts, then you actually get to draw three of the new magical amulet cards and pick which one you want. So it's the only way you can get an amulet where you know in advance what it does and you get to pick a good one. Normally. Of course, it's a random thing that you won't know what the amulet does. The chances of finding both parts of this? Probably not that likely. The biggest issue with those new search cards is they do change the distribution of the search deck and make it harder to find secret doors. 
The Catacombs expansion also includes 20 new room tiles. You get seven of the regular rooms with the white arrows, two more corridors with the yellow arrows, one new hazard room, which is a spider's web with a green arrow, four special chasm rooms with the blue arrows. The interesting thing about these is if you choose to pass over the chasm, there is a chance you will fall off the plank. If you fall off, then you actually end up in the catacombs, whether you wanted to be there or not. Finally, there are six rooms with black arrows that indicate entrances to the catacombs, and each one of these is different. We've got the spiral staircase. We've got a pit, who in their right mind would go down there. We've got this little hero quest stairwell. A ladder, another staircase, and a, another staircase. And it is worth noting there is a small printing error on this tile. It has a white arrow, but it is actually a catacomb entrance, so should have a black arrow like the rest. When you finally enter the catacombs, your game of Dungeon Quest changes slightly. First of all, you remove your miniature from the board and you replace it with one of these arrow tokens. There are four of these. You simply place the arrow on the last room that you were in before you entered the catacombs, facing in the direction you intend to travel. From then on, rather than drawing from room tiles and exploring new tiles on the board, you will draw from the special catacombs deck. There are 32 cards in the Catacombs deck, and on your turn you simply draw the top card and resolve it. It may be an empty room, it may be wealth beyond your wildest dreams, it may be a horde of rats, or it may be a cave troll. There are lots of different things going on in the Catacombs. What you are really looking for is uh, wealth, but also an exit. There are some of the cards that have ways to get back out of the Catacombs. When you get out of the catacombs, you are basically dropped in a slightly random place on the board. There's a handy dandy diagram in the rules leaflet, which explains exactly how it works. But basically, for each card that you have drawn while you're in the catacombs, you read up this chart here. And then when you find the correct row, you will roll a d10, and the d10 will tell you how far to the left or the right you have deviated. So. If you have drawn four catacomb cards, you would, from the space where you put your arrow, you would count up four, one, two, three, four. You would then roll the d10, and if you rolled a one, you would have to count two spaces to the left, and then that's where you would pop back out on the main board. That may be a space that already has a room tile on it, in which case fine, but it may be an empty space, in which case you will then have to immediately draw a room tile and place it down and continue your adventure from that point. It's pretty straightforward. And that's your lot really, although I would be remiss if I didn't point out the best thing that this expansion provides, a photocopyable Hall of Fools certificate that you can get if you survive Dragonfire Castle. You can photocopy these, sign them, hand them out to your mates, and remember all the good times when you didn't get eaten by a dragon. And that's it, where do we go from here? Well, I'm going to be incorporating all of this expansion into my base game of Dungeon Quest and there will be a playthrough on the channel with these new components added in. For that new playthrough we are going to do a head-to-head -head between two of the heroes from the Heroes for Dungeon Quest expansion. We are going with my pick, my favourite character, Thargrim the Chaos Warrior. I asked Antek for his pick for favourite hero from the Heroes for Dungeon Quest expansion and he expressed an interest in Rildo the Thief, so Rildo the Thief is our second character. It's my pick versus Antek's pick. We will see who comes out on top. So watch out for that on the channel at some point, hopefully in the not too distant future once I've actually painted Rildo. But that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.